Hello everyone. In this video I'm trying to answer one of the questions on our forum and it was about how to create something like this. As you can see, this is basically an array of a box on the surface, but if we look more closely we notice that um, the gap between the boxes uh, in both direction of this uh, surface is almost consistent. And this is the property uh, that we are looking for when we're creating an um, array like this. So I'm going to open up my 3D Max and uh, I'll be using Part 3D 3.3. And I'm going to show you how to um, basically create a kind of parametric wall on the surface with a consistent gap between the um, uh, units. So let's go ahead. Okay. This is my um, parametric surface. I made it by a uh, couple of um, uh, nerves curve, and then I used the loft uh, comment to to bind them together, and then I, and eventually I got this surface. Um, just to see better what's uh, happening in our array, we're just going to use the, um, the ISO only option here. So this only displays the lines, and we get rid of the mesh. Uh, we we start with the uh, simple box. In this case, I'm going to put um, 40 centimeters for length, uh, 20 for width, and 10 for height. So here we go. This is my box. Now I have to start my parametric array. Okay, obviously we we should we should create a two-dimensional array as. Um, as one dimension follows the z direction and uh, other dimension which is going to follow the curvature of the surface. So here we start with the um, let's say 10 by 10. It doesn't matter, you can change it anytime later. Uh, we don't need really the original object since there's no modifier on it. Uh, I'm using Max 2012 so uh, I think most of you knows that this uh, realistic um, uh, shading is active is going to affect the power to the performance. So we just switch to shades, get more smoother uh, workflow. Okay. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to pos position all the boxes on the surface, but I'm not going to use the position. Uh, we're just going to use the we're going to under the position and using these X and Y. The reason I'm doing that is that I want the Z position to be independent from the surface. So uh, now I'll let you know why is that because we're going to keep the gap and the vertical gap between the uh, items uh, independent from the surface. Um, here, so we're going to click on X position and then the first thing. You need to you need to do is the is this instantiate a convert controller from the library. Uh, we need the convert controller because the surface controller output is always vector format, so we need to take that and convert it to the scalar format as we're going to assign to the X position. So this is my convert controller. Obviously, we're converting from a vector, so which is vector. The vector is coming in, and it would the X component of vector is going out, so mm, mm, the default setting is correct. So I just accept that. And uh, for the vector component here, we need a surface controller. Okay, so here we go. Our surface controller. Uh, we just leave the default setting for now. And just pick and just pick the, the surface from the scene. Okay. Well, we do the same thing for Y position. Uh, so I need to copy this and paste it again. Everything is going to be the same except the component which are um, extracting from the vector input. So that would be Y component because we are assigning it to Y position. So we just um, okay. Now we are updating the both X and Y. 
So what you see here, we're extracting the X and Y position of the surface and then we give it to X and Y position of the boxes. So obviously all of them are in the same plane as we are not changing any Z position. So now it's time to create a controller for Z position. Um, for Z position, I'm going to use a linear controller as I know that always these uh, boxes are going uh, vertically in Z direction with a consistent gap. So that's very easy to do with the linear controller. Um, the, in the linear controller, I know that it always, I know that I have to apply this on the second dimension of my array because the first dimension is always uh, follow the surface. So we uncheck this. I know the distance between them, so I choose the incremental, so I can put the distance between the uh, uh, boxes. The distance would be in t uh, second dimension, uh, something like um, 11 uh, centimeters. Why that is 11 is because the, the height of the box when we created was 10 centimeters. So I'll just keep one centimeter gap for uh, between them in Z direction. So here we go, we update that. Okay, now we need uh, we need more item in order to 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 fill up the, the surface. So we'll just go back to our array and for the second count, which is the number of items in second dimension we probably have to enter 13 let us see oh we need more 14 okay all right that sounds good uh so you can see that i have um all the boxes in uh, in Z direction with one centimeter gap between them. That's what I need. Okay, now we also need to rotate all these boxes in such a way that they it, they follow the move of the surface. Uh, so here we have the rotation. Um, on each axis we need to rotate, as obvious, this is the Z axis. Uh, so we, we choose the Z rotation. We need again a convert controller. Uh, again we are converting from a uh, vector value so let's just uh, copy the surface controller which we have here and paste it in there and this time let's look the normal vector which is uh, rotation so this we extract in rotation and it goes to the vector uh, then we extract the z component of that rotation we assign it to uh, z rotation so let's just see what happens if i update that okay it looks like all of them are following the surface but all perpendicular to the surface which that was not what i i expected so i need to rotate them 90 degrees more in order to get them in the right direction so let's just add a math controller. This allows us to to add 90 degree to the to the result of the convert controller. So here in math controller, we choose A plus B. B is going to be 90 degree and A is going to be whatever comes out from the convert controller. So now instead of that, I'm gonna assign this to Z rotation. See what happens now. Okay, perfect. Now they're following the surface. Go back to my surface controller. Uh, you, need, you need to take both of them. As you notice, the, the spacing is not um, consistent. The reason is that when it follows the node surface, uh, whatever you have been, you know, whatever the control points of the uh, nerve surface uh, are more far apart 
the divisions are larger and then where they are more closer to each other the divisions are smaller so in order to fix that we just optimize the uh, optimize our surface um, against the uh, edge length which allows us to have uh, kind of uh, uniform divisions on U uh, direction. Since you do that, you can see that try to keep the divisions uh, almost the same. It, it, uh, it tries to keep the divisions uh, more, uh, more uniform. Uh, and then we go under the spacing options. There's an option, say, in U direction, you can have a fixed distance between them. And I will enter 45 centimeter as I want 5 centimeter gap between each one. Uh, let's just update it again. Each 45 centimeters, we got one block. So, in order to cover the whole thing, you need more block. So, we're just going to use the. Uh, uh, we're just going to add some more blocks in the first dimension. Uh, let's just say it's going to 30. Okay, that's, that's great. The last thing you do is you need to stagger down the blocks so you can actually build this. Uh, so for that, in, in here, uh, in the new offset, in my surface controller new offset, I'm going to use a pattern controller. And the reason I'm doing this is that I want every other row to, ha to, to shift um, half block so this is how you do it the first row you shift half block and then the second row you don't shift um, and then you do the same thing for um, for the rotation so you can keep it consistent so now if you update that here we go we got our um, well, we got our parametric wall uh, with the staggered pattern. Um, if, if you notice here, there's some plots are clashing. This is the if you, if you need more accurate results, you just go to the, uh, the surface controller and instead of uh, in, in optimization methods, you you probably increase a little bit of the uh, of these two parameters and you try it again. takes a little bit more time but it gives you better result in terms of uh, uh, optimization now I don't have I don't see that problem anymore and all of them and all of them are actually looking good um, yep okay uh, so let's look uh, to our array settings so we use the um, convert controller to convert the vector uh, output from the surface control into a scalar we use the linear controller to um, vertically uh, uh, locate the boxes with a uh, consistent uh, gap we use the math controller to rotate them 90 degree because initially they were perpendicular to the surface and we use a pattern controller in order, in order to stagger the surface paneling. Also within the uh, surface controller, we use the edge length optimization and uh, fixed distance option in order to get fixed distance between the blocks and also uniform divisions on the surface. I hope uh, you learned something. If you have any question, please feel free to post it on our forum. I would be glad to answer. Thank you very much.